Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your source for Second Amendment news. It's been a huge week, uh, been very busy, uh, in the middle of a 12-day firearms instructor class. So please forgive me if some of the videos have coming out later than usual. Uh, plus, I've been going through a shift change at work, so it's a little crazy right now. But I wanted to tell you some good news. Yes, some good news, Second Amendment related. This is coming out of Texas. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has now signed all of the pro-gun legislation that was submitted to him in the 2019 session. I'll go over the 10 of them real quick, give you a quick synopsis, and uh, I do want to let you guys and gals know in Texas that uh, these the new laws take place September 1st. That's when they go into effect. If you uh, don't live in Texas, please forward this because eventually we'll make it to somebody who lives in Texas and they do need to know this information. So without further ado, here are the 10 pro-gun bills signed by Governor Abbott. Number one, and I'll tell you who sponsored these bills so you can reach out and touch them as well. I'll have a link in the description so you can find the senators and their or the, or the representatives and get their contact information. So number one, and I'm gonna read them uh, from my uh, form here just so I can stay accurate because there's 10 of them and I don't wanna, you know, too many brain injuries. Um, so House Bill 121 was uh, sponsored by Rep. Valerie Swanson and Senator Brandon Creighton. This will provide legal defense for license to carry holders who unknowingly enter establishments with 30, 3006 and 3007 signs as long as they promptly leave when verbally informed of the policy. So those who don't live in Texas, those two signs, 3006, 3007, they point to uh, the actual law number. But those are the laws where a business owner can post a sign up front. It has to be an official sign worded a certain way that says no guns allowed. Basically, it's it's a please stay out of my store if you love freedom type deal. But this will allow legal defense, which is a lawyer, in the event that uh, they leave when they're supposed to if charges were brought, okay? So this is actually good. I don't believe you should be able to put those signs up, but that's my opinion. I don't live in Texas and I'm not the governor, uh, but this is a good one. Number two is House Bill 302, and that's uh, from Rep. Dennis Paul and Senator Brian Hughes. And this will prohibit no firearms clauses, no firearms clauses, uh, in future residential lease agreements, and it will also protect tenants' rights to possess lawfully owned firearms and ammunition in dwelling units and on manufactured home lots. This will also allow those people to transport their guns directly between their personal vehicle and these locations. So again, I don't live in Texas, but uh, there were issues where people could ban uh, renters or rentees or leasees uh, from having firearms uh, in their rental agreement or their, their rental lease. So this is a good thing. I mean, it should have never been able to happen that way because freedom and constitution, second amendment, you, but I digress. This is another good bill signed by the governor. Number three is House Bill 1143. And this was sponsored by Representative Cole Hefner and Senator Brian Hughes. If you're hearing that name a lot, sounds like everybody in Texas should reach out and thank Senator Brian Hughes because uh, it looks like he's a pretty pro-gun cat. Uh, but uh, this bill will prevent school districts from effectively prohibiting the possession of firearms in private motor vehicles by limiting their authority to regulate the manner in which they are stored in locked cars and trucks, including employees. So you might not be able to have it in the school, but you can secure it in your vehicle. Uh, and that law, if I remember right, it might have been Tennessee uh, or it's somewhere in that region that actually started that movement because employers were saying, you can't have your guns here. And then people were securing them in their, their, um, their vehicles in the parking lot. And they were saying, well, you can't have them there either. And a lawsuit, I forget the lawsuit because it's been a long time, but it basically said that if you prohibit them from having it inside uh, the establishment, you have to allow them to secure it safely somewhere. And that's what this law is also doing in Texas. Number four is House Bill 1177. Now, you might remember I did a video on this a couple weeks ago, uh, and this was from Representative Dave Felon, P-H-E-L-A-N, or Phelan, or, and Senator Brandon Creighton again. Uh, this protects citizens from being charged with a crime of carrying a handgun without a license while evacuating from an area during a declared state or local disaster, uh, or while returning to that area. And this allows shelters, which are otherwise prohibited locations to carry, to decide whether or not they will accommodate evacuees with firearms in their possession. So that last part sounds wonky, but if you were displaced from your home due to a flood or a tornado or whatever, uh, and you had a firearm, the shelters could say, nope, go out there and suffer because we the people don't care about you the person because 
gun-free zones and unicorns and rainbows. Number five is House Bill 1791. And this is from Rep. Matt Krause and Senator Pat Fallon. And this is going to close loopholes in the state's wrongful ex exclusion law that cities, counties, and state agencies uh, have been using to restrict license to carry holders in government buildings. Ooh, that's a good one. Number six is House Bill 2363. Uh, and this is from Cody Harris, who is a representative and Senator Brian Birdwell. Uh, this will allow foster parents to store firearms in a safe and secure manner while making them more readily accessible for personal protection purposes. This bill is similar to some issues going around in other states in which the liberals decided that if you wanted to be a foster parent and save some child from a deplorable uh, condition or help better their life or they were born, you didn't have parents or whatever reason that those kids needed a, a family, if you were going to be kind enough and open your heart and home to those kids, well, you had to give up your freedoms. And I'm glad to see that some of the states are responding appropriately. So good job on Texas. Uh, at least it's a step in the right direction. Number seven is House Bill 3231. This is from Rep. Travis Clardy and Senator Pat Fallon again. Uh, this will improve and modernize the state's firearms preemption law. It'll curb the ability of municipalities to abuse their zoning authority and circumvent state laws to restrict sale or transfer of firearms and ammunition at the local level and allow the state attorney general to recover reasonable expenses incurred when obtaining injunctions against localities which violate the preemption status. This is looking to say what's going on in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania will never happen here or those municipalities will pay dearly. And I like that. Uh, that is something that, again, that's common sense. If a group of people who are sworn to uphold and protect the Constitution of the United States pass on constitutional laws, uh, they should be freaking hammered for that. Not just financially, but they should be put in jail. That's for me. I'm a patriot. What do I know? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But let's continue because there's a couple more. Number seven is House Bill 535 from Senator Donna Campbell and Representative Dan Flynn. This will strike churches, synagogues, or other places of worship uh, from the list of prohibited locations in the penal code, clarifying that these places have the same right enjoyed by nearly all other controllers of private property in the state to de decide whether uh, or not to allow license to carry holders on their premises. My question is, is like, if I, like, maybe it's just me who carries it when I go to places like that. I don't know. I don't seek government permission, permission for that. Number eight. 741, Senate Bill 741, Brian Hughes again, Senator, and Representative Brooks Landgraf, uh, or Land, yeah, Landgraf, sorry dude. It prohibits a property owner's association from including an, or enforcing a provision in a dedicatory instrument that prohibits, restricts, or has the effect of prohibiting or restricting any person who is otherwise authorized from lawfully possessing, transporting, or storing a firearm. This is for those homeowner uh, associations that think they can tell you how to live your life, that they think that because they have a little bit of power that they're the kings of that area. You know, like homeowners associations that say, you can't fly the American flag because we don't like it, or you can't paint your house this color, or you can't have that sign on your lawn, uh, that stuff. Well, I guess in Texas they were saying, you can't even own a firearm. <laughs> yeah, right, good luck with that one. The last one, number 10, Senate Bill 772, Senator Brian Hughes again, man crush and rep drew springer provides uh, civil liability protection to business establishments which choose not to post the 3006 and 3007 signs making them less vulnerable to frivolous lawsuits and giving them incentive to adopt permissive policies for the carrying of handguns by law-abiding citizens on their premises so this is saying that if you choose not to have those signs and you want freedom in your store you get a little bit of protection when those wackos those loony people come in and try to do crazy stuff so I think those are 10 solid uh, bills that were signed into law by Governor Abbott. Now, if you live in Texas, let me know what you think about this. I think that uh, if I'm grading this exam, this is a an A+. Uh, however, this also tells me that uh, even though this is good stuff in Texas, you still have a lot of wackos who are trying to pass infringements upon you in, regarding the Second Amendment. Uh, so that is why we need to pull together. I say it time and time again. Uh, we are the biggest group in the country, those of us who, you know, have guns, own guns, shoot guns, whatever, for whatever reason, but we're the most fractured <laughs> group in the country. And if we pull together at all costs, instead of looking for every little reason to hate each other, we will be 
an immovable object come next election. And that is how we help save the Second Amendment. Please pass this along. I would appreciate it. If you are not already subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so. If you like to see the news, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, related to the Second Amendment, this is where you're going to find it right here on Guns and Gadgets. I post videos as often as the news comes out. I try to get it out as soon as it comes out, and oftentimes days before you see it on other avenues, if you see it there at all. So please consider smashing that subscribe button, hit that bell icon just after that so you're notified of new stuff as I put it out, and consider visiting my other social media avenues. It's on the bottom of the description of every video I have, because you never know when YouTube might delete stuff. So until we see each other again, this is Jared from Guns and Gadgets. Thank you for your time. Be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon. Take care, everybody.